just do a modified version just with the time frame. Um, so this is the team on the photo here, myself and Linda Chikowski and Anish Kathway. And we disappear regularly for quite long periods of time and do surveillance for cotton diseases. And so I'm just briefly um, showing you the survey protocol and the typical things that we would find in the field that we're looking for. So early late se and late season, we would venture out. We have um, a range of selected fields that we look at. Uh, we don't um, particularly look for diseased fields, but we just want to get a representation of the region that we go to, because we do travel to all the cotton growing regions across Queensland and then across the border into the border rivers into New South Wales. But the sorts of things we find are um, the seedling diseases such as rhizoc and pythium, black root rot. We have alternaria, early season and late season, um, verticillium, fusarium wilt, and a whole lot of bowl rots. And we take back samples, identify what we suspect to be the disease, um, and then we release this to industry. And from these graphs, you can see we've been doing um, surveys for a very long time. So we have long-term data. It's been more than 20 years of data that we've collected. And we can then uh, say to industry, well, for example, with fusarium wilt, these are the regions that there's this ongoing concern. This is where research needs to be concentrated. We look at um, the disease triangle with the environment and varieties and a whole range of things to try and understand why is there increases in a region for the particular diseases. And this very much um, directs the funding that we get for uh, what pathogen we need to work on. But during our travels and also with our broad contact within the industry, we have um, come up with some really interesting things in the field. And I'm just going to briefly cover those and then just tell you what the impact for industry, um, what the impact was in us finding out what these pathogens are. So for example, we've had verticillium wilt caused by verticillium dahlia for a long time in Australian cotton, but it was only recently that we determined that we had what is termed the defoliating pathotype or VCG1A. Now, interestingly, it was a Twitter feed that, that someone, a grower was um, putting out to his colleagues, to, to his farmer friends, and it made its way to someone who then told me, hey, look, do you know that there's a, a farm with this, they think it's really bad verticillium on the downs. And we don't normally see a lot of verticillium on the downs. And so I managed to find out who this grower was and said, hey, can I come and visit? We then um, isolated verticillium dahlia. Um, and then it turned out we actually had this defoliating pathotype that we had not detected in Queensland before. This, um, as part of the protocol, was sent overseas. The isolates were sent overseas as a, um, for a, uh, a second confirmation and using VCG analysis and also specific PCR. Yes, they determined it was VCG1A. And so that has really impacted um, how this pathogen is managed in Australia because then the breeders, then looked at the two pathotypes separately in their breeding program and have determined, well, they actually respond differently to their, um, to the breeding lines and to their germplasm. And they now treat this as two distinct uh, diseases because of the response in their susceptibility or, or resistance. So a really important finding for industry. The other one um, I'd like to talk about is um, reniform nematode. This was back in 2012. This was in our finding of this was in response to the consultant in the Theodore region. He had noticed over a few years this uh, this bottom picture shows these stunted cotton plants, and you know in this region it's not uncommon to see sort of a uneven growth, a bit of stunting, uh, just because of the type of soil and the bed formation. It, it, 
there are a lot of root issues in this region anyway that we've noticed. But it, we brought back some samples because there were these um, nodules or egg masses on the roots. We gave them to Jenny Coburn. She confirmed that we had reniform nematode. And so this was the first case of this um, nematode in cotton. And thankfully, it's only we've only found it just in the central Queensland region and mostly around the Theodore region. But as a result of the finding, we did extensive surveys through this region. And what we actually did, if you look at this map here, this is um, just one area of Theodore. We actually divided all the fields up into 10 hectare plots. And we systematically um, surveyed collecting soil, extracted the nematodes and they were um, identified and counted. And we thought, you know, maybe it wouldn't be widespread, but it actually was and in some very high populations as well. And so we've now done research and we have an understanding of the um, yield loss and the population. We've done work with um, the breeders and there's no varietal resistance in cotton. And we've also done population um, studies and rotation trials. And we know there are very big reservoirs of this um, nematode deep in the soil profile. And even though we can reduce the um, population with a non-host, as soon as we put cotton back in, up it comes and, and we get very high populations again. So at the moment, there's not a lot um, the growers can do apart from trying to keep the populations down with um, crop rotation, but it is an ongoing problem. Leaf spots have been really interesting just recently and, and I, I attribute this just to the climate because uh, the leaf spots are very much um, influenced by moisture. So up in, in the more humid areas up north you'll find um, leaf spots more prevalent and in just the last couple of seasons we have had really hot humid um, conditions and we've seen these leaf spots pop up. So a grower, um, a consultant asked us to come down to the downs and look for, you know, determine what on earth was this going on, because this does not look like Alton area, which is our normal pathogen. And we've recovered Pithomyces, um, which isn't usually associated with cotton leaf spot. So we're just keeping an eye on that one. One that has popped up quite a lot the last two seasons is Stemphilium. And so we've been recovering that. A um, lot of early um, senescence, which you can get in cotton, and it's often related to the phosphorus um, being drawn from the leaves to, to fill the bowls and to have the bowls filled, and you do, so it can result in this early senescence. But in this case, um, there was an awful lot of this leaf spot, which was alternarian stem phyllium. And because of the climbing change, um, you know, the change in climate, we're just concerned that we're going to get the um, an increase in these leaf spots with if we're getting an increase in in humid environments so we'll just keep an eye on that another thing um, we found quite a while ago now we used to go to the burdock and we haven't been for a long time as they haven't really planted cotton up there for a while but um, we brought oh there was a this was a consultant who told us about this when we were up there and they determined like cut these bowls open and there was the, all this rotten seed and um, thought, hmm, we hadn't seen this before. There was a lot of sucking pests around which are unknown to um, allow the penetration of, of pathogens. And so once we had an identification from Roger Chavez of and, and Tomani of this um, nematospora coralli, which is what it was called at the time, it's now had an, a name change. Um, it made sense that yes, we now know from overseas work, uh, this pathogen can cause um, big losses for fiber production. And it's from sap sucking insects, feeding on those bowls and transmitting the um, yeast into that we haven't seen it since um, this particular field had a lot of, um, of these insects and it hadn't been managed well. But usually sucking pests are not a big problem for industry uh, because they do manage their pests really well. The last um, disease I'd like to talk about is this new disease that we have in cotton called reoccurring wilt. 
we first came um, to know about an issue um, in, in 2017-18. This was so, uh, just a small patch in this field. So this photo here is a field um, up in central Queensland in Mara. And they actually, they didn't tell us about this small patch initially. We heard about it when it was a one hectare patch in an 18 hectare field um, because they were concerned it was an exotic disease. And in these photos below, so the left, this is Texas root rot, which is um, an exotic to Australian cotton. And then on the right is what we now term reoccurring wilt. And as you can see, um, to the eye, you, the first thing you would think is, oh my God, I've got, you know, this exotic, because we didn't have anything um, disease wise with cotton that behaved in this way. So um, very glad it's not exotic. Uh, it's now been detected in several regions in Queensland and New South Wales. There is certainly potential to have a high economic loss because the plant wilts and dies so quickly. So unlike some of our other pathogens and um, our diseases where we can still get yield off the diseased plants, there is obviously no potential for um, any recovery for yield from these types of plants. So you just get this wilting, as you can see in this photo on the left, and very quickly these plants will just die. It can happen any time through the season, right from first flower all the way through to bowl. Um, we're seeing, you know, young plants and then mature plants just wilting and dying suddenly. Very typically is this, um, this uh, staining that you get, this uh, wedge-shaped staining in, in, the, um, in a cross-section of the stem. And then you can see this vascular uh, discoloration under the bark as well. Here we have um, in a dead plant, you'll typically see this um, blackening and you cannot recover the pathogen from the stem if, if it doesn't have this blackened um, appearance. The roots are very, uh, they're decayed, they're very dry, it's like a dry rot. If you pull the plant out of the ground, you're very likely just is to pull away very quickly and leave a lot of the root behind because it's so dry and rotten. You'll see single plants and you'll see patches. We've determined the cause as um, a fungal pathogen in the family Diodopacea and we believe we have um, new species of Eudipella and there's no records of Eudipella causing disease on cotton anywhere in the world. So, you know, we've got a, a big job ahead of us to, to not only now we've identified it, but then to determine um, how did it evolve? How did it appear? Um, how are we going to manage this? Because there is no um, resistance to it in our in our varieties currently, because we have done um, a, a trial looking at the different varieties and they're all highly susceptible and equally susceptible. So big job ahead of us. So this, this is something, um, yeah, that we're gonna be working on for a while, I think. And lastly, um, you know, we do a lot of surveillance and, and we see all our common um, diseases, but it's actually been the relationships with the growers and the agronomists and our REOs that have been the most important for us to actually um, discover these new things. So they're in touch with what's happening throughout the whole season. And if we hadn't had this really good network, we, we would not have heard about all of these things or, or at least some of them, which are obviously having a big impact on the cotton industry and require funding and research uh, to how to manage them. So that's um, my very brief update on the things we find, the interesting things. So thank you for listening. Thank you to all the um, companies and the people listed on, on the slide. Um, very much appreciate all the assistance you've given us.